Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today, we are going to be talking about Hedera and HBAR. So with that being said, let's just dive in. Let's start off with this post here. Um, I do want to ask everyone a question. What do you guys think about the World Economic Forum? I'm sure that that is going to stir up a little bit of uh, discussion in the comments. As we really kind of look at the World Economic Forum, what they have been doing, they've been spearheading the fourth industrial revolution, a subject that is not new to this channel. I've been talking about it for a while, actually. A lot of projects within the space are uh, aligned with the World Economic Forum on the fourth industrial revolution, simply because we are seeing the digital age of finance evolve and become a reality. With this comes a lot of scary and concerning subjects. Um, decentralized ID technology is one. This is a post by Hedera talking about that. Um, but is it concerning that Hedera is working with them? In my opinion, it's not really that concerning. I think a lot of people kind of get a little bit emotional um, when it comes to the World Economic Forum um, because there is a lot of other companies working with them. Ripple is one of them. Quant's another one. There's a lot of crypto projects and companies that are tied to them. Um, this is a global organization, and it's an organization that is spanning years and years and years. I mean, we're talking decades. And also, they have a lot of connections to almost every company out there. Um, now, yes, I do think that the World Economic Forum has a lot of terrifying plans for humans. Um, I think that this digital ID... Although, yes, it is extremely terrifying, it's also something that will most likely become a reality very soon. Um, a lot of what we are seeing aligned with the central bankers, with the World Economic Forum, it's almost inevitable, right? We, we've talked about this even with CBDCs and digital currencies and things like that. But this is a post from Hedera, and we do see Hedera is proud to have contributed to the Reimagining Digital ID Insight report published by the World Economic Forum, providing analytical frameworks, tools, and recommendations regarding decentralized ID technology, policy, governance, and implementation. Now, first and foremost, at first, yes, um, a lot of people probably think that Hedera working with the World Economic Forum is uh, a new thing. It's really not. Like I said, the fourth industrial revolution is something that we have been seeing becoming a big deal uh, for a while. This is their idea of merging the physical, digital, and biological worlds in ways that creates both huge promise and potential uh, peril. Uh, so a lot of this is technology driven. A lot of it's centered out on AI technology and augmented reality, all that kind of stuff. Um, this has been a thing forever now. We've been talking about it for a while. But... Hedera has been working with them for a little bit of time. In fact, Hedera is a, a known partner of the World Economic Forum. There's an article that we recently went over back in March actually talking about this digital ID and the framework behind it. The good thing is, is I, I, I will say this. A lot of these private companies or these um, you know companies like even Hedera working with the World Economic Forum is actually very beneficial for us because it means that the individuals behind the WEF or if the World Economic Forum, if you will, um, are the only ones working on these things, then yeah, that's going to be extremely terrifying. But with the help of some of these companies like Hedera, I do say like it's technically not a terrible thing because it will be decentralized. But again... There is still like I, I, I think being concerned um, and being scared initially is not a bad thing. I think that we need to understand the concerns tied to a lot of these things. And I think that we need to question a lot of these things until we actually have, you know, trust implemented. Um, it's the same thing with CBDCs. I say like we should be concerned about these things. I think that we should be asking all the, you know, hard hitting questions before we have these things implemented into our life. Because, again, these things can you know, drastically change our environment, drastically change the way that we go about our everyday life. And I think that that is a significant change that needs to be questioned. I think that we should have our concerns and I think it's healthy to have our concerns. That's also why we do a lot of our research on these things to make sure that, you know, are our concerns just concerns or are they, you know, really, you know, big, serious problems. Um, but also, Hedera, going back to January of this year as well, um, they did host five days of events at Davos, which was again hosted by the World Economic Forum. And then also going all the way back to June of 2020, a new report from the World Economic Forum 
notes that the new Hedera consensus service seems to be promising for enabling blockchain interoperability. Hmm, interesting. Again, I do think that they have been aligned for a while, um, but now today, more than ever, we are seeing this becoming a reality. But a lot of people are concerned about this, and in fact, the HBOR uh, Gremlin, which I've talked with many times in the past, very incredible individual. Uh, he is responding back to this and saying, more horrifying than exciting, to be honest. Hello, radical transparency, goodbye privacy. And yeah, technically, like this is the case. Like if we are seeing things become digitized, a lot of that tr that privacy gets thrown out the door and a lot more transparency is there. And when you see while this might drive adoption, I'm not sure anyone is going to be happy about it. Just my opinion, though. What do I know? And although, yes, I'm kind of aligned with this, like I don't think I, I honestly don't think a lot of these in, in quotation marks innovations are technically you know, like, I don't think that they need to happen. Um, a CBDC, for example, I said it many times in the past. I don't think that we need a central bank digital currency. I mean, what have central bankers done for us in the past? Absolutely nothing. And honestly, with a central bank digital currency, you know, what's the difference between that or a stablecoin? The only difference is, is that the central bankers can't control it. So you can see why they're trying to push heavily for a lot of these things. And it does call for concern. And, you know, will we be happy with a digital ID? I don't really think so. I mean, does it allow for convenience, you know, for quicker scanning of our ID and things like that? Like, yeah, sure. But is it needed? Is it something that is necessary? No, it's not. But over here, this is the post, reimagining digital ID. For centuries, ID, a way for people to prove attributes about themselves, has played a pivotal role in society. Yet today, roughly 850 million people still lack a legal ID, making it difficult or impossible for them to fully engage with society. Simultaneously, many of those IDs or many uh, of those with ID do not have privacy and control over how their data is shared. And then within this, they do mention, like this is the executive summary, that this is what I'm mainly going to go over because there's a lot of information within this. If you guys do want to go check this out, you guys are more than welcome to by Hedera's post. Um, but here we have... There are roughly 850 million people who lack legal identification, which makes it difficult or impossible for them to fully engage with society. At the same time, many of those with ID do not have privacy and control over their data is shared. Several approaches to digital ID could help broaden access to goods and services and offer individuals greater privacy and control. This report explores one such approach, decentralized ID, which enables users to control their personal data while allowing issuers to contribute attestations or credentials about them. If implemented in a trusted privacy preserving manner, decentralized ID can increase access and control while enhancing efficiency and effectiveness. And again, like this is why I say, you know, I, I, I do like the idea that Hedera is, is on board with this simply because I do think that they will put our, you know, privacy and our trust you know, in the in the forefront. But the problem is, is that I still don't trust the World Economic Forum. They give us a little bit of an idea and an overview of this ID. For an example, we do see for centuries idea means by which people, you know, prove attributes about themselves has played a pivotal role in society. Recognizing this, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, identity, uh, legal or identify legal identity, sorry, as a developmental or development uh, priority. As people's lives become increasingly uh, mediated by digital technologies, there is a related need to develop a digital ID or a way to make claims about personal data through digital channels. Centralized, federated, and decentralized ID systems, as well as hybrid approaches, each with unique advantages and disadvantages, can help fulfill this need. And they do have recommendations here, barriers to implementation, centralized ID, and all that kind of stuff. Now, the thing around this that I can see being beneficial is with AI becoming a radical change around, you know, everyday life, I think that identification is going to be crucial. And I think that that's what they're kind of getting at with this, like, you know, with it being so secure, trusted, all this kind of stuff. But again, like, I, I just don't, I mean, I, I, I get it, you know, they want to kind of give IDs to those 850 million people. Kind of the same way we have been hearing about like banking the unbanked uh, for so long. Um, but I just don't know. I, I, I like the idea that Hedera is on board simply because, again, like when we look at Hedera being that third party player, um, it means that there is someone there that we can technically trust. But I just don't trust the World Economic Forum. I never have, right? Uh, a lot of the people tied to the World Economic Forum are definitely concerning. The biggest problem about a digital ID is how they are going to implement this, right? Because 
Is this going to be an implantable technology? Because that's what the World Economic Forum has been pushing for so long. In fact, if we go over here from 2017, scientists have created brain implants that could boost our memory by up to 30%. Followed by this, we did see, could this pacemaker for the brain be the solution to severe depression? Also, we have brain implants, the future of computing. And then also over here, these groundbreaking implants could restore vision in blind people. And I know what you guys are probably going to say, like these implantable technologies are great. They're helping people, you know, become, you know, more aware that are becoming, you know, a big thing for those that are blind or have disabilities. And that's all great on paper. But this is also the same organization that has been pushing sinister and radical changes for so long. And we'll talk about that here in a second. And we do see over here this implant used AI to help a paralyzed man walk again. Again, all of these implants, they're going to cater it to a lot of the problems. But this is like we have to remember that this is brain implants. This is implantable technology in the brain which I get it, right? Like it's helping a lot of people. I love to see that. But I, I just don't know if I love to see it coming from the World Economic Forum. It's the same way that we recently seen Neuralink, which is Elon Musk, it's his company. Um, and this is brain implants, right? This is implantable technology in the brain. And when you see Elon Musk, Neuralink says it has FDA approval for human trials. And I even made a video on this. I said, this is concerning. But all of this aligns with what they want to do. Like, e e even if it's not implanted devices, they also want to create these wearable devices that are like Fitbits for your brain, like as you guys do see here. This goes all the way back to January of this year. But this aligns with one of the, the, the professors, um, actually from the World Economic Forum, uh, Yuval Harari. I hope that I'm saying that name uh, correct. Um, this is a guy that believes that technology is the future. He doesn't believe that humans are the future. It's pretty crazy, but listen closely to this video. But some gov governments and corporations for the first time in history have the power to basically hack human beings. There is a lot of talk about hacking computers, hacking smartphones, hacking bank accounts, but the big story of our era is the ability to hack human beings. And by this I mean that if you have enough data and you have enough computing power, you can understand people better than they understand themselves, mm -hmm. and then you can manipulate them in ways which were previously impossible. Mm -hmm. And in such a situation, the old democratic system stopped functioning. We need to reinvent democracy for this new era in which humans are now hackable animals. You know, the, the whole idea that humans have, you know, this, they, they have this soul or spirit and they have free will and nobody knows what's happening inside me. So whatever I choose, whether in the election or whether in the supermarket, this is my free will, that's over. We need to come to terms with the fact that, you no know, matter again, it, this is where philosophy meets computer science and biology. So, yeah. I mean, if we actually look at these individuals, they want humans to be hackable um, individuals, essentially. They want us to have these implantable technologies or wear these devices that, you know, again, all connect to your brain, have some sort of connection to your brain. This is very concerning. And uh, the, the thing that worries me about digital ID is, again, it's very on par with their motives here. Um, again, I do like the idea that Hedera is a part of this simply because, simply because I know that I can trust Hedera, or at least I thought I can. When we start to see their motives aligning with the World Economic Forum agenda, it definitely becomes concerning. Um, do I believe that Hedera is a chosen company to work with the World Economic Forum? Most likely, right? Very similar to Ripple, very similar to Stellar or Quant or any other company that is, uh, you know, assigned to them. The thing to me um, that I have concerns about is anything that is implantable technology or anything that can be hackable um, with digital IDs. I also think that it opens the door for a lot more hackability and uh, vulnerabilities. With Hedera, we know it's one of the most secure um, networks out there. We know with ABFT, it's extremely secure. I just don't like the idea of them wor working with the World Economic Forum on things like this. 
Um, I like to have it more aligned to what Hedera has been focused on, which is becoming a network for enterprises and things like that. Um, but I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I just don't really like anything assigned with a uh, World Economic Forum agenda. Um, I think that their agenda is definitely concerning. I think a lot of this idea around like implantable technology centered out on the brain is probably one of the most concerning subjects that we've been hearing about for the last couple of years. And I actually remember when Neuralink uh, was a big thing getting mentioned for a, a while back in like 2016, 2017. And even then I thought this was a wild idea. And now today more than ever, it is becoming extremely concerning. Um, but let me know what you guys think down in the comments below though. I'd love to hear your thoughts. With that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Guys, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord in the description below. Uh, this is up to you all. Have a beautiful day, beautiful night. If you guys are on this beautiful world, it's been Nick. Peace out, guys.